The Richest Man in Babylon by George Samuel Classen. Narrated by Andrew. This is great audiobook production, created for research, study, and discussion purposes. Chapter 8 The Walls of Babylon. Old Banzer, grim warrior of another day, stood guard at the passageway leading to the top of the ancient walls of Babylon. Up above, valiant defenders were battling to hold the walls. Upon them depended the future existence of this great city with its hundreds of thousands of citizens. Over the walls came the roar of the attacking armies, the yelling of many men. The trampling of thousands of horses, the deafening boom of the battering rams pounding the bronzed gates. I in the street behind the gate lounged the spearmen, waiting to defend the entrance should the gates give way. They were but few for the task. The main armies of Babylon were with their king, far away in the east on the great expedition against the Elamites. No attack upon the city having been anticipated during their absence, the defending forces were small. Unexpectedly, from the north, bore down the mighty armies of the Assyrians. And now the walls must hold, or Babylon was doomed. About Banzer were great crowds of citizens, white-faced and terrified, eagerly seeking news of the battle. With Hushtah they viewed the stream of wounded and dead being carried or led out of the passageway. Here was the crucial point of attack. After three days of circling about the city, the enemy had suddenly thrown his great strength against this section and this gate. The defenders from the top of the wall fought off the climbing platforms and the scaling ladders of the attackers. With arrows, burning oil and, if any reached the top, spears. Against the defenders, thousands of the enemy's archers poured a deadly barrage of arrows. Old Banzer had the vantage point for news. He was closest to the conflict and first to hear of each fresh repulse of the frenzied attackers. A an elderly merchant crowded close to him, his palsied hands quivering. Tell me, tell me, he pleaded. They cannot get in. My sons are with the good king. There is no one to protect my old wife. My goods, they will steal all. My food, they will leave nothing. We are old, too old to defend ourselves, too old for slaves. We shall starve. We shall die. Tell me they cannot get in. Calm thyself, good merchant, the guard responded. The walls of Babylon are strong. Go back to the bazaar and tell your wife that the walls will protect you and all of your possessions as safely as they protect the rich treasures of the king. Keep close to the walls, lest the arrows flying over strike you. A woman with a babe in arms took the old man's place as he withdrew. Sergeant, what news from the top? Tell me truly that I may reassure my poor husband. He lies with fever from his terrible wounds, yet insists upon his armor and his spear to protect me, who am with child. Terrible, he says, will be the vengeful lust of our enemies should they break in. Be thou of good heart, thou mother that is, and is again to be, the walls of Babylon will protect you and your babes. They are high and strong. Hear ye not the yells of our valiant defenders as they empty the cauldrons of burning oil upon the ladder scalers. Yes. That do I hear and also the roar of the battering rams that do hammer at our gates. Back to thy husband. Tell him the gates are strong and withstand the rams. Also that the scalers climb the walls but to receive the waiting spear thrust. Watch thy way and hasten behind you buildings. Banzer stepped aside to clear the passage for heavily armed reinforcements. As, with clanking bronze shields and heavy tread, they tramped by, a small girl plucked at his girdle. Tell me please, soldier. Are we safe? She pleaded. I hear the awful noises. I see the men all bleeding. I am so frightened. What will become of our family, of my mother, little brother, and the baby? The grim old campaigner blinked his eyes and thrust forward his chin as he beheld the child. Be not afraid, little one. He reassured her. The walls of Babylon will protect you and mother and little brother and the baby. It was for the safety of such as you that the good queen Samiramis built them over a hundred years ago. Never have they been broken through. Go back and tell your mother and little brother and the baby that the walls of Babylon will protect them and they need have no fear. Day after day old Banzer stood at his post and watched the reinforcements file up the passageway there to stay and fight until wounded or dead they came down once more. Around him unceasingly crowded the throngs of frightened citizens eagerly seeking to learn if the walls would hold. To all he gave his answer with the fine dignity of an old soldier, the walls of Babylon will protect you. For three weeks and five days the attack waged with scarcely ceasing violence. Harder and grimmer set the jaw of Banzer as the passage behind, what with the blood of the many wounded, 
was churned into mud by the never-ceasing streams of men passing up and staggering down. Each day the slaughtered attackers piled up in heaps before the wall. Each night they were carried back and buried by their comrades. Upon the fifth night of the fourth week the clamor without diminished. The first streaks of daylight, illuminating the plains, disclosed great clouds of dust raised by the retreating armies that a mighty shout went up from the defenders. There was no mistaking its meaning. It was repeated by the waiting troops behind the walls. It was echoed by the citizens upon the streets. It swept over the city with the violence of a storm. People rushed from the houses. The streets were jammed with a throbbing mob. The pinned-up fear of weeks found an outlet in the wild chorus of joy. From the top of the high tower of the Temple of Bell burst forth the flames of victory. Skyward floated the column of blue smoke to carry the message far and wide. The walls of Babylon had once again repulsed a mighty and viscous foe determined to loot her rich treasures and to ravish and enslave her citizens. Babylon endured century after century because it was fully protected. It could not afford to be otherwise. The walls of Babylon were an outstanding example of man's need and desire for protection. This desire is inherent in the human race. It is just as strong today as it ever was, but we have developed broader and better plans to accomplish the same purpose. I in this day, behind the impregnable walls of insurance, savings accounts, and dependable investments, we can guard ourselves against the unexpected tragedies that may enter any door and seat themselves before any fireside that we cannot afford to be without adequate protection. For more audiobook like this, hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get notified when we post a new audiobook. Thanks for listening.